Now we'll take care of one question which is based on the uniform strength that is the value of the stress at any distance x from the free end in the case of cantilever is constant. A tapered cantilever beam of constant thickness, so you have shown here a constant thickness is loaded as shown in the figure. Top view is given here and we have a cantilever fixed at end A and at free end where the load P is acting. The length of the cantilever is L. The width at A section will be equal to 6 times of P into L by sigma D square and the width at X equal to 0 is equal to 0. So at B we will take X is equal to 0. At A we will take X equal to L. We will consider here a section plane which is shown by dotted line and let's say the section plane at a distance equal to X from the point B and the X is positive as we move to the fixed end. At this section here the width is variable but the depth is remain constant. So this one is same as the depth D and the value of the depth throughout the section is remain constant. But the width is continuously variable. So let's say this width is same as equal to B1 and this width at distance equal to X. The moment of the force P about the section is clockwise and the since it is on the right hand side the moment is negative quantity that is a clockwise is negative and anticlockwise is positive. This moment is given as minus P multiplied by X and the corresponding bending stress here at the same distance that is sigma B at a location equal to X. Naturally this value I will consider as a maximum value because we are always interested in the maximum value is same as equal to MX multiplied by C. C is the distance of the top fiber and bottom fiber from the neutral axis and we have I said. Basically the section here is a rectangular section and every time the width is variable. The idea will be get clear if I develop the isometric view of this cantilever beam. So this view you can visualize as a front view. On the top view you can visualize here the width equal to B at the end A at any distance x from the free end you will get the width equal to b1 and this section at a distance equal to x total length equal to l and it has a constant depth that equal to d means we have a rectangular cross section everywhere so at a given distance x here we have width is equal to b1 depth is same as equal to d so we can very well calculate here the moment of inertia moment of inertia for this section is B1 multiplied by D cube divided by 12. We can also locate the neutral axis here. So this one is one axis of symmetry. This one is second axis of symmetry. So this point is same as our centroid and this axis is neutral axis. Top fiber here at a distance equal to C from the neutral axis as well as bottom fiber is also at a distance equal to C from neutral axis that is D by 2. So in this case the value of C which is equal to D by 2 is same value everywhere whether you take this section so it has an X of symmetry like this and since the depth is constant the value of C is also same for top fiber as well as bottom fiber but the value of B1 will change and at any section here the moment of inertia about the Z axis for this section is equal to B1 multiplied by D cube divided by 12. So we'll consider the half section here of the given figure. So this height here is same as this height that equal to B by 2 and we have total length equal to L. Inside this we'll consider this right angle triangle whose height will be equal to B1 by 2. So this height is same as equal to B1 by 2. So we have B1 divided by 2 and the corresponding length will be equal to same as equal to x. Larger triangle here is symmetrical to the smaller triangle. So in that case we have b by 2 by l is same as equal to b1 divided by 2 times of x. That is we have b1 is equal to b divided by l multiplied by x. So this value of b1 will substitute here so we have iz equal to b1 is same as b multiplied by x divided by l multiplied by d cube divided by 12 and finally we'll put for mx equal to minus px. So this is 
So mx is replaced as minus of px, iz is replaced as bx d cube divided by 12 times of L, c is replaced as d by 2 and we'll solve for bending stress maximum at any distance x. If this value is independent of x, then we can conclude that the bending stress is remain constant at any distance x. So let's substitute here. We have bending stress maximum at any distance x equal to minus of mx. mx is same as px. p into x. c is replaced as d by 2. So multiplied by d by 2 divided by i z. So this term we have to write in denominator is b into x multiplied by d q and 12 l will come in numerator. So these two and this 12 will cancel out and we left here with 6. Then the value of x and the value of x is cancel out. So what we get is the bending stress at any distance x is equal to 6 times it's a negative sign minus 6 times p into l. One of the d's also get cancel here and we have d square divided by b multiplied by d square and here we can again substitute b is equal to 6 times of pl so we can put for b is equal to 6 times of p into l divided by sigma into d square so if we substitute we will get a bending stress at any distance x equal to minus of 6 into p into l by d square and here the value of b will be equal to b in denominator. So we have to start with 6 times p into l and we have sigma into d square. So 6 and 6 is cancelled, pl is cancelled and even the d square is cancelled. So what you get is finally the value of bending stress sigma bx is same as equal to negative value of sigma and this value of sigma is a constant value. So this is the example of a uniform strength. So we have a uniform throughout the length. Bending stress will not change and is remain constant throughout the length. So our conclusion is that the bending stress at any distance x is almost constant. So for the above beam there is no variation of a bending stress along the longitudinal axis that is the bending stress is constant everywhere. So if the bending stresses remain constant in that case, it is called as the uniform strength. So this is the concept of uniform strength. In the case of uniform strength, the bending stress is almost constant. Everywhere, even the distance x will change, the value of the moment of inertia will change and therefore the moment of inertia will change, then the bending stresses remain constant. A cantilever beam of length L supports a concentrated load P at its free end. The cross section of the beam is a rectangular with a constant width. So this time we have a constant width and the varying depth. In the last numerical we have a constant thickness and the width is variable. And in the present case we have a cross section of the beam is rectangular with a constant width and the varying depth. The depth h of this idealized cantilever beam varies in such a way that the maximum normal stress at every cross section remains equal. Remains equal means that we have a concept of uniform strength. That is the value of bending stress at every section is independent of the distance x from the free end. So no term of x should appear in the equation of bending stress when we calculate at any location x and is equal to the allowable bending stress. Considering only the bending stresses, the depth hx of the fully stressed beam at any distance x from the free end shall vary linearly, constant, parabolic or none of the above. We have given here the four choice. In the first choice, we have linear variation. So the load is acting at the free end and this one is fixed end and here the depth is increasing linearly. That is if you draw the front view you will get a triangle in the front view of a cantilever. And in the second case we have a constant depth that equal to h. Here the depth is variable, here the depth is constant. 
in the first case the variation is takes place linearly so whenever is constant the height is remain constant and does not change with respect to the distance x third choice is that he says that the depth is variable and is variable is parabolic so this time we have this section you can visualize and the load is acting again at the free end so this one is a parabolic distribution so when it is a linear it means that you take at any distance here and the corresponding height will be called as hx and this height at any location x is proportional to x then it will be called as linear and if you take any distance here our height is remain constant so at any location we have hx is constant value that is independent of x and when we have parabolic then at any distance from the free end we have depth equal to hx and this value of hx is proportional to either root x or either x square this time it's a root x then it will be called as parabolic so if you view the end view here we will find this cantilever is shown in, the, in this figure we have point load is acting at free end equal to b at a we have maximum depth equal to h and the width is remain constant in the second case when it is a constant here the the depth is constant then we will get a rectangular section in the side view and when the depth is parabolically varying then you will get the view here maximum depth again coming out to be at a fixed end and at b we don't have any depth if you take a section here at any distance x so you take any case here and from the free end we can take here section at a distance equal to x in that case we have bending moment is mx is same as equal to minus of f multiplied by x here also we have distance equal to x and for this plane that is the section plane we have bending moment is mx equal to this one is a clockwise so you have to take is negative is minus f multiplied by x here also we have distance equal to x and we have same value of bending moment at any distance x equal to minus of f multiplied by x the section is rectangular here so at a given section here we will get a rectangle of width equal to b and we have depth equal to hx horizontal axis here represent neutral axis the maximum stress will exist either at the top or bottom and both these distance of the top and bottom at the same value equal to c and the maximum distance of the top fiber or bottom fiber from the neutral axis at a distance equal to hx divided by 2 and the moment of inertia here we have a constant width equal to b multiplied by hx cube divided by 12 and bending moment for all these cases is mx equal to minus f multiplied by x so we can calculate here the bending stress at any distance x so bending stress at any location x is given as sigma b maximum is equal to mx or maximum bending moment multiplied by c divided by iz value of m is replaced as minus of f into x constant c here is hx so we have c is equal to hx divided by 2 and we have bending moment i is b h x cube by 12 so we have b into h a cube divided by 12 here the bending stress is a constant value so we have sigma b maximum is a constant value because we want to design it for the uniform strength in this case the value of h x cube and h x so value of h x is cancel here and we are left here with 2 2 12 so 2 and 12 is equal to 6 so we'll get here hx square that will shift on the left hand side so we have depth at any distance x square of it is equal to minus of f it's a 6 times of f divided by maximum bending stress that is constant value even the width is also constant so this entire term is a constant term here and is further multiplied by x so it clearly indicate that the depth at any distance x should vary in proportion to under root of x that is the depth must be parabolic variation that is this choice is correct so since here the depth is proportional to root of x 
we should select a parabolic distribution. So in this case, our choice C is correct choice. Here clearly we'll find here the depth is varying in proportion to root of x. So when the width is constant, the depth is proportional to root of x or uniform strength in the case of cantilever beam and the load is subjected at the free end. And in the same cantilever, if we have uniform depth, that is D is constant here, then the breadth should vary linearly from B to 0 over a distance equal to L. Again, in the case of uniform strength. A rectangular section beam is subjected to bending moment M varying along its length. So this time the bending moment it's varying. That is true in the previous two case also is required to develop the same maximum bending stress. That is we want here the again the uniform strength at any cross section. If the depth of the section is constant, then the width should vary as is proportional to M, is proportional to root M, is proportional to M square or is inversely proportional to M. So let's say here we have a rectangular cross section and any distance x, we have width is equal to bx and the depth equal to d and the value of the depth is constant. So this value of d will not change. The value of bx depend upon the value of x and here the neutral axis is represented by a horizontal line. We have centroid is represented by g. We have maximum stress on the top fiber or bottom fiber. For this one, we have value of C is same as equal to D by 2. So this value is also fixed value. But as far as the moment of inertia is considered, we have moment of inertia is IZ equal to width is BX multiplied by depth Q divided by 12. And this one is a variable. So this time the IZ is proportional to width equal to BX. In that case, we can calculate the maximum bending stress at any location any location x. Using the Fletcher formula, we have maximum bending stress equal to m into c by i. Maximum bending stress here we want constant. So we have sigma b maximum. Bending moment is variable is mx. Value of c is same as d by 2. And the value of i is equal to bx. That is the width at any distance x multiplied by depth cube divided by 12. So here one of the D will be get cancelled and we left here with D square. 2 is cancelled with 12 and left here is 6. So we get here the width at any distance equal to BX is equal to 6 times. And here we have D square. So in denominator we have D square. And in addition to that we have maximum value of bending stress. So this value is not going to change with respect to the distance X because we have a uniform strength. Then what is left is mx. That is the bending moment at any distance x. It means that this time the width is proportional to the bending moment m. So here the choice A is correct. The width will vary as proportional to m. The video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on google store and in this app we'll cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate join the course directly from your mobile the link is given here